Yeah, your boy Chili here. Welcome back to NanoSaf. We're going to get started here by downloading the Chromium Embedded Framework. If I can just find my mouse pointer. Here we go. So, Ceph downloads. Your first link here is on Spotify CDN. They host it. So, I think they are they made it originally or they are like one of the earlier adopters as a major application. So, yeah, a lot of different things here. Standard distribution has, I think that has all the example applications built in I don't know we go go with the minimal go with the small boy here it's a it's a tar biz you gotta figure out a way to extract that but I'm just gonna download this bad boy and then extract somewhere to my disk so I open this up with 7 zip and I will drag this to my C folder you can put it wherever you want I guess I don't like this long ass name so let's uh, just go Ceph and I think this is 136 there you go, we got the Chromium Embedded Framework Distribution. So in here you got like a bunch of bunch of stuff, a whole lot of crap. Um, so the stuff in release, except for the, so the lib files in here, you link to those. We won't be using the sandbox, so you don't have to worry about that one, but we have to link to libceph. And all the other stuff, these DLLs, and maybe some bin files, other shit, that all just goes in the same folder as your executable. You're gonna distribute that with your executable. And you look at conspicuously, you got one really big boy in here. That's libceph. And that is just, that's all of Chromium basically rolled up into one C API DLL. So this is the thing that has Chromium in it. And I find when you roll all this stuff up into an installer with like compression enabled, it's it, you get about 100 megabytes, or give or take. So there you go. Uh, so this is the releases put most of that stuff in with your exe there's the resources they also this stuff also goes in your exe so data files that chrome chromium reads all the stuff in include here you're going to copy this into your project folder this is the source files that you are going to include in your project and that's giving you access to all the ceph types now here's the thing about this so chromium in releases here the libceph that gives you a c api very low level interface and the, the good thing about having this C API is you can bind it to a whole bunch of different languages uh, and it doesn't really matter your compiler version or whatever so this is used because there's other ways of interacting with Ceph the most basic one is C++ but there's also like Ceph sharp you can do it with C sharp and there's ones for like Python and a few other languages I don't know the thing is like you could technically from C++ you could interface directly with this DLL or C endpoints but it's like it's ass they say even like Ceph says don't do this don't be stupid and do this they have a thing for you to interact with that and that is the wrapper that's the C++ wrapper that goes around that DLL so these includes are all from that wrapper but you also have to build the library. This is the headers. You need to build the source into a library for the wrapper. And they can't distribute that library pre-built for you because they don't know what version of you know the standard library you're using, what version of the compiler. You need to build it with your own tools. So that's the second step here. We got to go and they, they got a CMake for you. So if we open up the CMake lists, we take a little gander in here, there's a procedure to build it. And at first it's like, this is a pain in the ass, but it's not its not that hard really. Especially if you already know, if you're already steeped in the deep lore of CMake, this is not a big deal. But just to, uh, to break it down for you, they got a little guide in here. So first thing you do is you make a directory in here, a subdirectory called build. You go in there and then you run CMake. And it depends on what you're building. So we want to build for Windows Visual Studio. So we're going to do CMake, generate, Visual Studio, we don't want Win32, we want X64, so we're going to run this command. And the dot dot means run it on the directory above this, because we've made, we're in the build subdirectory. And that's how you do it. And that'll generate for you a solution. So let's do that. Let's get, let's get that out of the way. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to do what they tell me to do. I'm going to call it build. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to get in the boy. Get up in here with PowerShell. I'm not going to use PowerShell, because I don't know. It's going to be any different now you got to have CMake installed on your system it's not a very big install it's not a very difficult install once you got that in there you're gonna type or copy what they told you which I've already forgotten 
that's this one CMake G Visual Studio 17 I mean I'm using 2022 so that is my version and this stuff so I've already typed the CMake part so let me just type the other part copy pasta style and you run that and it's not going to take that long it's going to generate a solution is what it's going to be doing so it doesn't actually do the build it just generates the the thing that does the build yes and there's a lot of options here I suppose but uh, we don't care we don't care we're not going to be difficult we're not going to rock the boat we're just going to go with the flow so now in build here we got a solution now you could run that you know you could run ms build from the command line if that's your kink but i'm just going to do it here we're doing it live so we're set up debug x64 we want to build the debug version and the release version of the libraries but we'll, we'll start only using the debug because i'm lazy so we'll run build we build that now this will take a, a little bit but it's not going to take that long and there you go you've got your library file that's the library, all the code for the libceph DLL wrapper. And now we got the things we need. So um, let's make a project, create a new project, empty project C++ console. I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, we can change that. We'll put it in here. We'll name this one nano Ceph. I hope I didn't use that name already. Put the solution and the project in the same directory. Uh, I mean, we might, we might as well. We're not going to get too carried away with it here. Probably not going to do multiple projects in this bad boy. So I think that's good. First of all, I want my solution view to show me the file system, not their weird folders thing, their filters. Properties. So let me see if I can remember what we want to change here. We're not going to be using VC package. You know, if, if possible, I'd like to pull stuff in a VC package. It does not exist and makes sense. Because VC package is usually about building everything from source, and you don't want to build Ceph from source, because that means you're building Chromium from source. Uh, we don't want to do that. So, advanced. First, we should add a C file to this so that Visual Studio gives us all the options for C. And we'll call this file our win main. Very good. And now if we go in here, we're going to have the C++ options, advanced. Uh, make sure we're on all configurations so I don't do the thing I usually do. We want to use multi-byte characters here. I don't want to type that L. I want to give everything the L. Um, let's see here. Just language. Ah, you got to give me my, you got to give me my previous. I, why are we, we are in 2025 and we still don't have C++ 23 standard as an, it's just latest working draft. Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, Pre-compiled headers, they turned off by default, just the way we want. Code generation, this one, I think we need to do some stuff because the default options for Ceph, their runtime library is not the DLL one. So we got to match it or it's going to be angry with this. So that's this. And we got to do that for debug as well. That is DLL, D, uh, not DLL. All right. We did language. Uh, and the last thing that I can remember off the top of my head is we don't want this. We want Windows. We don't want a console because we're going to create a GUI. That's the whole point of this. That's the whole freaking point. So let's just like make sure that this builds. Like two decades of writing Windows programs. I still don't remember how the freaking entry point goes. So I'll just copy past of that right here. And of course, it's going to be angry because if you got a win main, it's got a bunch of stuff that's defined in Windows. We'll return zero. And we'll just make sure that that builds. It does build. Okay. Step two, let's make sure that we can include uh, your Ceph includes and they don't blow up. So in here, what we could do, let me just open the folder. So if I create a new folder, I call it like Ceph. I want to put all my, my includes in there. So go back to our Ceph folder. We got the includes here. Control A. Don't screw with me, Windows. Copy. Copy in here. Yeah. Yeah, you do that. Are we in? We're in. Okay, we got okay, so we got the includes in there. And then if we refresh this, we should see Ceph. Yeah, that's good. So the two main includes that we're gonna be using, let's just try to include them here, is gonna be Ceph slash Ceph underscore app. Ceph forward slash Ceph underscore. It's already not looking good because it's got some red underlines there. Client. So these two, we need these boys. 
Why are you mad? Cannot open source file Ceph. Oh no. It's good. It's all good. We're chilling. All right. Let's build that. Yeah, that doesn't work. Oh, okay. So here's the first thing you got to know about Ceph. The way they set the includes up is a little fucky. And it means... Well, I mean, let's just look at it. Let's look at it. Like, let's go... Cannot open file includes Ceph base. So if we go into... Why are you taking up all my real estate here? If you go into Ceph app, which is the one we include, all their includes are prefixed with the include. So that's a little weird. Um, and the way I've found to, to fix that is if you just name the folder where you put all your Ceph stuff. Don't name it Ceph. No, that would be that would make too much sense. Name it include. Name it include. And then if we build, it didn't work. Ah, yeah. Because I, I, cause now every time we want to include something from Ceph, we don't say Ceph. No. We say include. Okay. And like, I mean, there's probably other ways of fixing it. Maybe more elegant ones. But this works. And so this is what I'm doing. All right. Well, I, I said it works. I might have been a little... Ah, yeah, your boy. This is your boy, Windows.h. Just throwing a little... Where's your... There we are. Yeah, you little bastard. So this is, of course, define... Uh, I mean, if you if you, I say, of course, you haven't seen it yet, because I know what this is already. Yeah, stidmin. Yeah, Windows.h. They love to define their macros. So don't do min max. You know, if I'm making, like, I'm going to make this application very minimal. I'm not going to architect it in any way. So obviously, if I was making a real application, I'd have my own Windows.h wrapper that customizes it and sets the version and everything, uh, does all the good things, and gets rid of most of the cancer. But, um... You know, we're going to make this as simple as possible just to demonstrate how to get Ceph working up. It's nano Ceph. That means it's going to be small. All right. Now you got to build, right? They're cool. We're building. So this is our starting point. We got everything all set up there. I mean, when when we actually write the first app and we run it, we'll have to copy in the, the release and the resources and we'll have to put the lib in there and include it but uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it we'll do the things we need to do when we need to do them but this is a very nice starting point for us I'm gonna wrap it up and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video if you did please click the like button it helps a lot and I will see you again with some more nano Ceph.